This is Mirage. Mirage is a writer. Mirage loves golf, but didn't turn pro. A good thing, because he would have probably starved. He loves motorcycling, can strum and sing a bit, and is committed to nothing except a life on the road. This is Johan. Johan is a photographer. Johan is more Indian than I am, but carries a Swedish passport. Johan has lived around the world and bankrolled his travel with some pretty interesting gigs. He's picked apples, been a bartender, worked on an oil rig, before finally discovering the camera. Last year, we teamed up to travel for a year in India and chronicle our experiences. It's been quite a trek, a hell of a ride, a drive like no other, a flight to new horizons, and a voyage that we hope won't end anytime soon. Okay, I appear to have reached a dead end. Let me show you what I mean. There's a road, and well, there's no road. So, folks, I've got to turn this baby around. Uh, yeah, it's not going to be fun. Okay. In Lomantang, a medieval walled city nestled in a valley just short of the Tibetan plateau in Nepal, roads are a novelty. Till a few years back, this erstwhile capital of the Kingdom of Lo was accessible only on foot, an arduous 15-day trek from the city of Jomsom that required travellers to navigate treacherous mountain passes circumventing the Annapurna Massif and the Dholagiri Range in the Upper Himalayas. Johan and I got here on adventure motorcycles, a quicker alternative but no less challenging. For five days, we rode through some of the most inclement terrain we've ever seen, let alone ridden on. When we got here, the annual Tiji festival, the biggest event in the city's calendar, was underway. Part of a privileged line of travellers who visited Lomantang since 1992, when the city was open to outsiders, we were witness to a unique and unchanged tapestry of rites that included a demon exorcism ceremony. Without a doubt, this expedition to what is perhaps one of the remotest corners of the world has been the crowning glory of all our travels in the last year and a half. That was awesome, quite colourful, huh? After a week in Lomantang, it's finally time to hit the road again. If we needed a refresher course on our riding skills, then we got a proper crash course, literally the minute we left Lomantang. First up, sand. Lots and lots of sand. I came across a horseman taking a kid for a ride. What a picture they made against the dramatic backdrop of these cliffs. When sticking to the road is such a challenge, I figured it couldn't be much tougher to go off-road. One of the riders took off and I followed suit. We saw a ridge in the distance and just gunned it as far as we could go. The festival name is Mela, okay. but the cave name is Zong Cave. Zong Cave. Zong cave. Zong cave yeah. if, you want to, uh, if you want to go to the cave, then you ask the Zong Cave, where is the Zong Cave? Okay. How yeah. many kilometers is it to uh, the border? One, uh, one, one kilometer. One kilometer? One and a half kilometer. Yeah. Here you get a pole, a uh, bridge. Ah. You can see all the cave. So the bridge, okay. Acha, the bridge, ah, Acha, one kilometer to the cave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
But the border, Tibet border. Very far. The border is very far. Maybe six, six kilometers. Six, seven kilometers. Kilometer. Okay. So you should ask here. Yeah. Actually, you are from South India. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I thought you guys just came from the border. What do you know? We are not the only people who are visiting from India. We're looking for one of the famous sky caves of Mustang. We've been seeing these on the cliffs all along the way to Lomantang. And the ones here are the most famous. There appears to be some kind of archery competition going on here. Pretty athletic, those kids. From just trying to pull the arrows out, this has become a wall scampering competition. Right above that is a sky cave. Why is it called that? I really don't need to explain. Walking in this altitude is not fun. I'm not in riding boots. Jule, Tashi Dele, how are you? Oh, right. Okay. Okay, this presents a singular problem. Check it out. How are you? Let's see. Yeah, I'm watching. Careful. How many floors? Eight. Eight floors? Yes. We can stay there, guest house, three guest house. Apparently, there are close to 10,000 sky caves that have been carved on the sides of the valley walls in Mustang, and a large number of these are almost impossible to get to. Over the years, explorers and archaeologists have found human remains, paintings, manuscripts and artifacts in these caves. The stairs are going here, there's yeah. a the viewpoint there. Yeah, believe there's a go up? Tavish Kotian, who we've been riding with, came all the way from the UK for this trip. The caves were apparently occupied for centuries and are believed to date back to 10,000 BC. This place is What's happening in there? It's a big room. Wow. Ooh. How did they build this place, man? Yeah, you can see the traces of tools along the yeah. along the bottoms yeah, there. Yeah, these are chisel lines on the outside. Yeah. Chisel lines, right? I doubt this is natural roots. Look. The biggest room here. Okay, well, that pizza making it look very easy. Oh. I'm curious why the ceilings are black. I think it's smoke. Probably. I think it's fungus. Could be fungus. It looks more like tar though. It looks more like tar. We've been wondering what this sticky black stuff on the ceilings is. It looks like tar, but how would tar end up in here? Suddenly, Johan has a brain wave. Okay, so see, this stuff is really like, it's really wet, it's really fresh. So whatever Touch it, is, it, is it fresh? Yeah, look at it. Could it be Shilajit? It could very well be. Johan has just landed yet another <laughs> incredible guess that might actually have fallen just, you're absolutely right, Johan. It is Shilajit. Of course it's Shilajit. It does. Oh my God, one of the original Kampas is still here. Yeah! You still here? Come on. Horrifying. Come here. Horrifying. Come in. Oh no, it's Johan. He's not a Kampa, he's a Hun. <laughs> Yo, Hun. <laughs> nice. And we found living proof that back in the day the Kampas had uh, sore allegiance to the Huns. What are you talking about? The, the Nordic warrior right here. <laughs> right. It will be difficult for you to get down. Wow. Now is that a view or is that a view or is that a view? 
it's not hard to understand why these caves must fascinate anthropologists. Who lived here? Why did they live here? There are no clear answers, only conjecture. In the 16th century, the king of Lo sent noble families and their armies to expand the kingdom to the south. Samar was one of the five capitals of Bargaon that were established at this time and served as the southern outposts of the kingdom. All the villages had strategic locations, either in the valley, like Agbeni, or on ridges overlooking the mountains, like Samar. Today there is no enemy army to look out for, but the ridge is a phenomenal place to look at the Annapurna Massif, almost at eye level. This town is probably one of the most scenic ones on the entire route, where there's a viewpoint above town, you can see the entire Annapurna uh, Massif over there, and I believe that is Manaslu over there, and the boys have headed out onto the ridge. It's a great viewpoint, but it also reminded me of those crazy dangerous places you hear about where people die taking selfies. I'll just shoot the mountains instead. The Milky Way is scheduled to rise just above this entire chain of mountains, so I'm gonna try to shoot that tonight, and I think it is going to be spectacular. I think this is probably one of the most scenic places or viewpoints I've ever seen in the Himalayas so far. Jomsum reminds me of those gold rush era frontier towns you see in old westerns. A single high street cuts through this dusty town that's bristling with activity. The street is lined with shops and eateries and we spot a neat looking cafe. Let's get some coffee, what do you say? Hey. Yeah, let's have a coffee. Huh? Have Himalayan coffee. Java coffee <laughs> and Hotel Ohm's Home. Ohm's Home. It says, home. It says Marfa Jomsum. So are we, Marfa district. I, are they, uh, town, huh? This is not Marfa. Right, it isn't, right? No, this is Jomsum. This is totally Jomsum. Man, but at least it's a town, eh? Let's That's get some coffee. Yeah, let's get some coffee. Come. Good coffee has been surprisingly easy yeah, to find it's... all over Mustang. Oh. But this cafe is something else. It's hard to describe how it feels to be confronted with the surfeit of choice after a week in the boondocks. Like Hazelnut? Starbucks. Check. Mocha? Caramel macchiato. Check. Caramel macchiato? You bet. Jomsum is Mustang's solitary link to the modern world. The short airstrip sits in the shadow of the magnificent Nilgiri Peak and small turboprop aircraft ferry travellers to and fro Pokhara. The flight is the only and quickest way to reach Lower Mustang if you're not making the road trip. From here though, you'll need to hire an all-terrain vehicle or get onto an adventure motorcycle to go further. The end of craving. That's all I think the name of this jazz bar could possibly mean. 
and it sure makes sense for us. Our first night on the town in a long time. Sanis Maharjan is a Kathmandu lad who was craving for a bit of peace and quiet where he could practice his music. So he decided to move to Jomsom and open a jazz bar. What's up, man? <laughs> Live music in hey. Jomsom, hey. Yeah. Man, I'm Miran. Welcome. Do do? Yeah, welcome to Craven. Nice to meet you. Yeah, yeah. Is this your friend, sir? Craven, yeah. It's Great. nice to have you guys here. What's, what's Crave End all about? The end of craving? <laughs> yeah, you're huh? really quite right. <laughs> craving so is that's, a, that's how I came up with the name, Crave End, because like we're, it's a, like a lot of people come trekking and yeah. they have all the cravings for like <laughs> some sweet, something cheesy or some drinks. Yeah. And, and that, that's going to end here. Awesome. How long have you run this place now? Uh, it's been about, it's uh, newly opened. So it, we started in 2019, so it's our first year. Okay. Right yeah. now? I mean, when you're in Mustang, mm -hmm. Jomsom is like a metropolitan city. <laughs> yeah, know? exactly. This is, is yeah. like a this is like a yeah. big city. Yeah. <laughs> but have you are you are you from Jomsom? No, no. I, I I've uh, moved here three years ago. So I used to oh. work uh, in Kathmandu. That's where yeah. I'm from. Oh, so yeah. Um, well, why, don't so you you yeah. why don't you serve us? Bro, yeah, I'll, I'll just, uh, oh, just, just, just get us whatever, <laughs> whatever <laughs> the chef thinks we should. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, we're not All right, uh, I'm just gonna go and like. Cheers, yeah, cheers, 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 buddy. All right. <laughs> Live music and good food. Man, I've missed the city. Jomsom gets more visitors than any other place in Mustang, and it's a destination in its own right. If you fly in, then you've got a Mustang vacation without the hardships that a road trip would involve. Meatballs, pizza and burgers, with a band playing just for us. Wow, Jomsom totally rocks! It was late when we got in, and Marfa's famous charms dawned with the morning. Even though we spent literally no time here, this brilliantly restored medieval township with its apple orchards blew us away. literally one narrow lane on a ridge overlooking the main highway, Tato Pani is a cute little hippie hangout with a smattering of motels and eateries. We're at Tato Pani, which is pretty much the end of our journey in Upper Mustang. Tomorrow we head to Pokhara. This is the Kali Gandaki River still, but it's... You can scarcely believe it's the same river that flows in Mustang. I mean, Mustang right now feels like it might as well be on the moon. This is like a small hamlet where people stop, mostly travellers and uh, there's just one lane uh, with a bunch of hotels and 
you know, Tibetan artifact stores and cheap lodges. I think I'm just taking a walk around, folks. Uh, I think our journey has pretty much come to an end. Johan appears to have found an unsuspecting recipient for his wildly exaggerated stories, who he's trying to convince to come out for a ride with him. The Kaligandaki River. It's been with us throughout this journey. We've ridden on hills alongside as it carves its way through narrow gorges. We've gone across precarious suspension bridges that span across it. We've descended down to it and literally ridden days on the riverbed. This ancient river, still teeming with ancient ammonized fossils, is very much the cradle of life in Mustang. It seems appropriate that I should say a proper goodbye by taking a dip. It should be mandatory to have an interim period after the end of a trip and a return to the grind. Most of us don't have that luxury. And most of us like to squeeze every bit out of whatever time we get off from work. The casualty in this scenario is post-travel reflection. By the time the next weekend comes around and you get down to sorting out photographs from the trip, you've lost touch with impressions and thoughts that disappear as fleetingly as they had arrived when you were traveling. Riding back from Lomantang, the capital of Mustang in Nepal, was a bit like having the best of both worlds. The five-day ride back was spectacular, to say the least. But after the high of Lomantang, the euphoria ebbed as we made our way back. Five days of travel back and out of the region you have visited is a pretty significant amount of time to look at where you've been. So what has this trip meant to us? I have a feeling we'll only comprehend that in retrospect. This was my second trip and I consider myself really lucky to have been able to come back to Mustang. And I'd come back in a heartbeat. From adventure bikes to a classic car, Mirage and Johan roll into Jodhpur in style. From the ramparts of an unconquered fort, our fearless explorers slide down slick lines and risk their necks cycling through the maze in the Blue City. Johan bravely volunteers for death by desert and Mirage unearths a century-old story of valor, of a soldier's medal that's finally come home. Don't miss the duo's heady adventures in Jodhpur, next week on We on Traveler. <laughs> <laughs>